Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. Thank you for joining me today. On whatever day that you're joining me, I really hope that you are having a great day. I'm just gonna jump right into this video as soon as I find my notes. So I've been helping out with interviews at my job and so it's been interesting. So this is my second time actually helping out with interviewing. Um, I helped out last year as well. And I just have been compiling a list of things that I've seen people do that I'm like, please don't do this. <laughs> um, so I will be talking about those things today and hopefully you don't make these same mistakes in your next interview. So I've got a list. So if I'm looking down, that's what you'll see me looking at. And in all fairness, I have also made these same mistakes before, so please don't think that you're that you're the only one or whatever. It's been done before, okay? <laughs> We've all done it, it's okay. The first thing I will bring up is very basic and it's um, even right before you get into the interview and you come into this interview and the job that you've applied for is a mid to senior level role and there's a junior level job on the website that is the exact same thing um, but just the level is different if there's a junior dev role and there's also a mid and senior level roles and you qualify for the junior and you know you qualify for the junior just the junior then apply for the junior level role. Um, yes, you'll get more applicants there, but a lot of times when when we say mid to senior level, we mean mid to senior level um, to a certain point, right? So if there's already a job opportunity out there for that same company and it, it's a junior level role, then go ahead and apply. I understand if there is not one and you just kind of want to make that decision. That's totally fine. I think that's fair, but just know your limitations walking into that. But specifically when it comes to already having a job out there, that could be yours. Go for the one that you think you can reach. And then while you're in the interview, um, also make sure to say, Hey, like, you know, there was a mid-level role. Do you think that like I could apply for that too if this doesn't work out for whatever reason? And then you could have that conversation in that interview and that's perfectly okay. Um, the second thing is not having confidence in yourself. I'm not talking about being cocky. I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm just saying like, honestly, just saying, hey, these are the things that I can do. And being able to say that with a level of confidence that lets the other person know, like, hey, I think they definitely have this ability. And I think, um, you know, that just comes with a level of practice, but it also has to deal with like, knowing what you know and what you don't know. So if you don't know something, having the ability to be like, hey, I don't know what this is, and then like moving into more conversation from there, but you have to know you have to be confident in what you are comfortable with doing in terms of your skill level and your technical abilities. The third thing is something I've seen and something I've also done myself. It's not giving context in your answers. So sometimes it's like, hey, tell me about a time where you worked on a project with somebody and you know, they wanna know what the project was how you collaborated, what was your your role in that project, and you know what was the outcome. And uh, sometimes there's a follow up of like like what what have what could you have done differently. And so being able to have that clearly lined out is super important, um, not only for you but it's also very important for the interviewer because or interviewers because um, then they could clearly understand like what it was that you were trying to accomplish, um, who you worked with, and maybe including some of the tools that you use to collaborate with others, um, considering we are in a virtual world. So it would make sense to kind of add those things in as well. 
whether you use Slack or, you know, how did you go back and forth with the person that you're collaborating with or maybe it's a group of people that you're collaborating with. So those sorts of things are extremely important. Tell a story. You may have heard it before, but tell a story beginning, middle, and end. And that's, that's going to make sure you have a solid answer. Please ask questions. At the end of the interview, make sure that you ask questions. Um, and please have some thoughtful questions. Um, you have the full attention of your interviewers at that point, and they want to answer anything that is that they didn't already answer during the interview, or give more context into something that may have not been as fleshed out in the interview. So now is your chance to do that and definitely take advantage of the people that you have in that interview room. And this is also to kind of help you um, later on. If you're looking for questions to ask and you kind of don't know what those questions are, uh, I'll make a video on like what kinds of questions that you should be asking during the interview. Um, and, and so definitely we'll, don't mind doing that because I think it's important you know and I also didn't know what to ask you know either sometimes you just don't know and that's okay but but definitely ask something <laughs> the next thing is uh, speaking of questions don't talk around the question you know I talked about earlier telling a story don't talk around a question um, or an answer to a question rather um, you know, you definitely have to put some practice into answering those questions, as I mentioned before, when it comes to having a beginning, middle, and end. But don't get into a tangent or not answering the question directly. And if you're unsure whether you have answered that question, definitely ask confirmation. Like, hey, like, um, I might have gotten a little far off in that, you know, answer that I gave. I just want to make sure hey, did I answer that question correctly for you? Do you need any more details? And they will, you know, say yes, you know, you answered it great, or, you know, no, you know, I'd like a follow-up question of X, Y, Z. And it really shows that you're also aware that maybe um, you might go off, you know, for a second, but you are able to come back and be like, hey, wait a minute. Like, I, I know that I did this, you know, reel me back in like make sure that like hey did i give you what you needed here and so it really shows a level of awareness as well of just who you are as a person and the next one is saying you don't know a, a specific topic but then that's it you know like have you ever been in an interview and uh, somebody asks you like, hey, what's a what's a class? What's an object? You know in terms of object-oriented programming. What are those things? And you might be like, yeah, I don't really know yeah. No, don't do that. Please don't do that um, The worst thing that you could do in an interview is say that you don't know and Don't give any follow-up uh, a better response would be you'd be like hey I don't know that specific concept. I'm not familiar with classes and objects as I have not um, closely studied that. Um, I do, I am aware that that is a, um, con those are concepts within object-oriented programming, but I just have not had the opportunity to work closely with that. Do you mind giving me a couple, uh, do you mind giving me an example of a class or an object? Um, and you know, if you're not comfortable with that, maybe say, Hey, I don't know specifically what that is. Um, I have heard of it and I do know it's an important thing. And I really would like to learn more of that. Do you have any resources of places that I can go to learn more about classes and objects? And to me, um, when I hear somebody say that it shows that they want to take the initiative to go and and figure out what this thing is. A lot of times as developers, we don't know what something is. I can't tell you how many times I've worked on something where in the very beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. And I had to just kind of go and figure it out. And that is our job, okay? And so if you can prove that you're willing to go and figure something out with the right information, then that actually shows a lot. And while you are in that space, 
uh, if you have the time or later on during the interview and you, you see maybe you're not doing too well with answering specific questions, it might be a good idea to go back and give an example of times where you did take the initiative to go and learn something because that does mean something. Um, only if that is true to you. Don't do it if, <laughs> if you're just like, oh, I've never taken the initiative. Like, no, don't, <laughs> don't do that if it doesn't apply to you. This last one is another huge deal. Not showing interest in the job. It's, I was gonna say it's not hard to show interest in a job, but it, you know, depending on your personality, it might be difficult for you to show interest if there is no interest there. Definitely make sure that you are expressing how you are interested in this position if you are interested in it. I'm assuming that you're in this interview room, you wanna work with us, show us. Show us that you're excited. Um, it, it could be as, as small as like, you know, being, you know, tying your answers back into how we do things. So you might, going back to that question of like, what's classes and objects? Hey, I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm interested to see how y'all do this at this company. Um, and does it differ to what the standards are, um, the standard practices are? Like, do y'all do anything differently there? So I honestly feel like, um, if you show, and again, this goes back to like initiative and, and, and making sure that you're aware of what you know and what you don't know so that you can kind of go back and, um, just kind of tie your answers into the company more and the team and what you want to know more about the team. And, um, the, the interest also can come with your, your questions. So, you know, at the end of the interview or during the interview, if you're going back and forth and you're, you know, have a chance to ask questions during the interview, um, yeah, definitely ask like, Hey, I'm not, you know, I'm interested in how y'all do PR reviews and what you all are looking for and that sort of stuff. Those things also kind of show that you that you might be interested and it also shows um, that you care about you know certain things. A big one would be you know knowing what the company does and being able to say, hey, I like this about y'all and you know I've read this on your website or I've done this research you guys are really great at XYZ and I want to get behind that. That's a very genuine interest and it goes so far. So do not take those moments lightly. I have a couple of honorable mentions. These are just things that um, are kind of, you know, when you're doing interviews as a developer, sometimes you also have coding in that interview. It's not always just talking back and forth. Um, but make sure you know how to do the basics in the language uh, for the job that you're applying for. So if you're applying for like a uh, Python job and um, you get in the interview and they're like, hey, you know, do this for loop, <laughs> it's never going to be that easy. <laughs> If you're so lucky, maybe it is that easy. I don't know. But uh, it's like, hey, do this for loop or something and code us this thing and you start typing in PHP and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> Unless it was clearly stated beforehand, hey, use whatever language you want to. Make sure that you're using the languages that are listed on that job description and you have the basic knowledge of how to do, uh, how to code in that for the interview. It's very important. Or like I said, it was already established that you could use a different coding language beforehand. Um, the second thing has to do specifically with like coding sample feedback. It's something that we do uh, where I work. We ask for you to give us um, uh, a coding sample and the we go through and review it. Um, and I've also had that done in the past at other companies. When sending code samples, um, it's best to just send us one repository that you're that you one or two that you want to you want us to pay attention to um, so we can get a, a sense of your coding style um, and it's also best that the code that you're sending us again is directly related to the job that you're applying for and basic standards and principles of that coding language are applied within the repository so you know that is kind of like basic square one of like where you want to start out with those things. Um, but if you, if you don't want more information on things to look for, for even resumes or 
code samples or anything of the sort, let me know in the comments down below or like this video. And yeah, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, this is just the things that I've been paying attention to the most and I've noticed that I have done as well in the past. Again, um, no one is alone here. We're all kind of just figuring things out. So hopefully this was helpful for you and thank you for watching. In the meantime, take care of yourself and be kind to others and I'll see you in the next video.